tell you what's going on. So the New <clears throat> Hampshire primary is tomorrow, which is now a two-person race after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis bowed out this weekend and went right back to kissing the ring. <laughs> <laughs> ring. <laughs> of you know who. Take a look. I am today suspending my campaign. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear. And we just got some word that one of our opponents, very capable person, is dropping out Woo! of the race, Ron DeSantis. And Ron is dropping out, and he, in doing so, he endorsed us. Yeah. He just said, will I be using the name Ron De Sanctimonious? I said, that name is officially retired. It's now one fella and one lady left. Yeah. I'll leave you with this. May the best woman win. <laughs> Was DeSantis doomed from the start? <laughs> Who can say? <laughs> so what happened? Well, first of all, let me just say, um, uh, my initial reaction to Ron DeSantis dropping out was, <laughs> right? But then I calmed down. Look, um, yes, he was doomed from the start. He was the most overblown candidate I've ever seen in my lifetime. He, um, you know, he won in Florida by 20 points, but he won because he really used every weapon of the incumbency to give himself a, a, an advantage. He suppressed the black vote, he changed voting laws, and he was running against an opportunistic has-been, Charlie Crist, who is the worst Democrat nominee in my lifetime in Florida. So yes, I mean, my, my dog could have beaten Charlie Crist. Well, Cha-Cha's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, don't put Cha-Cha down. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon after the dog competition. You're not a, Take Chacha's name out of your mouth. But, but also, um, so let's just look at what he did. He, he went to Iowa, he went to New Hampshire saying, I'm gonna turn the U.S. into Florida. Well, what did he do in Florida? He went after drag queens, he went after Mickey Mouse, he went after books, he went after diversity, he went after history. He, t he passed a six-week abortion law. Turns out most Americans don't care about waging manufactured culture wars against drag queens. They want to know how they're going to feed their families. They want to know how they're going to keep their families safe. So when he did all these stupid things, and I blame him entirely for his failure. He's the one that picked an, a campaign team that fleeced him and was not good. He's the one that chose this agenda. He's the one that's got the social skills of a root vegetable, and I apologize <laughs> to potatoes. So he's, you know, and it's all on him. I think his, his career, his political career is dead. I don't think he can now beat Rick Scott. Now, we in Florida gotta live with him for another three years, and so my hope is that he eats some crow. My hope is that he gets a little humility and that he comes back to Florida and instead of dragging us through these culture wars that nobody wants, he figures out how to fix the insurance problem that yeah. we're all facing. Well, and I would just say he, he left the race the way he entered it with a botched internet rollout. We all remember the Twitter <laughs> yes, spaces yeah. where you couldn't connect. And then he tweets out his announcement that he's stepping down from the race and endorsing yeah. Trump and misquotes Winston Churchill, or he uses a fake Winston Churchill quote. Yes. So that's the level of candidate we're seeing there. And I said from the beginning, I thought he was totally overblown. But something has been icking me in this race. Mm -hmm. Well, a number of things. There's some sexism we haven't talked about. Ron DeSantis actually intellectually knows that Nikki Haley is more qualified and more fit to be the GOP nominee. He's a Harvard grad, he's a Yale undergrad, he served in the Navy. He knows Donald Trump is not better than her and he threw in some jab at her and she's like warmed over corporatism. I'm sorry, it's giving sexism. I also think I like Chris Christie, I respect him. Him dropping out of the race, criticizing her in leaked audio and then refusing to back her even though she's the only person who could possibly beat Donald Trump, it feels like the boys can't 
can't handle losing to women. And we are the only nation, one of the only Western nations that's never elected a female president. Israel's had female prime ministers. Most of Europe has. There is some sort of a sexism in our politics we've just never been able to get over. Love her or hate her, she's objectively qualified for the role. She's objectively run the most professional race, and she would objectively be better than Donald Trump. And all Tim Scott, Ron DeSantis, all these people lining up behind Trump, they know she's actually but better. But I agreed when Christie explained his reason for that, I actually believed him. He said, as someone who believes you cannot have Trump back, if she goes and takes a vice presidential role in his administration, what have I done to my voters? I've led them to that. I appreciated that distinction because she has not denounced that she wouldn't do it. She says, I think it's less likely, and I don't think they'd she pick her. She raised her hand in terms of she would support that, her. But I mean, hand. most as of late, she's saying a little more like she wouldn't be interested in that. But then I heard somewhere that someone said if, if he offered her today, maybe it was Adam Kinzinger, he said if, if she was offered right now today, she would still take it. She and would. I think if you're saying you cannot have Trump, and then you push voters behind someone that would take something from Trump, you've led them down a dark tunnel. I agree, but I think we have to accept the race we're in, and I'm gonna fight with her until there's no other option left, because this is careening toward a Donald Trump-Biden rematch that I think is very bad but for But you don't think I don't that if think... Nikki Haley was where, I'm sorry, where Trump is, where he's, you know, he's coasting to the nomination, if she looked like she was winning, you don't think those people would endorse her? Because I think it's all about a, a opportunism more than sexism. Can I, I think something? it's both. Well, you know, the, the, thing, the thing about DeSantis, just woefully failing, I first thought, well, that means that people are rejecting Trumpism because he was supposed to be the Trump candidate without Trump. And so that felt to me at least a rejection of him more so than an, an em embracing Nikki Haley. The problem that I have with Nikki Haley, and, and, and one of our friends told, us, told me this this weekend, we don't know who she is. We don't know if she's better or worse than Trump because she goes, she flies with the wind and sways with the wind. We don't uh, know her policies really, but we. Well, one she's of the a two-term governor. But one of you the can policies, disagree, but we kind of know her record. One of the policies we do know in terms of her record is that she said that she would enforce a, the most stringent plan against women's reproductive rights. We know that about her. That's even worse than Donald Trump's plan. Except and she. So we don't know. Who but she, she is. did say that has no chance of actually making it through the Senate. She said but if she her, would do it. If her legislature passed it, the Democratic thing to do would be to well, sign it. I don't agree with it, but that's a. As we as.